Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So I'm out once again and this time round I'm at an event called Spoonfest. Now no spooning in your endos, alright? I promise in this video. So what is Spoonfest? Spoonfest is an event held in the northern part of the United Kingdom in a location called Edel. Absolutely spectacular. Especially when you come from London, anything spectacular compared to that. And it's a stunning part of the country with beautiful weather right here and now. And what Spoonfest is, is, is intrinsically, it's the world's largest event and gathering for spoon carvers and woodworkers in general, but primarily spoon carvers. So this is the first time I'm attending this event. I believe this is the fourth time it's being held or the fourth year it's being held. This is 2015. And I found, came to find out about this through other, obviously colleagues in the green woodworking space and the spoon carving space. If you've been following my channel for any period of time, you know that I've been getting into spoon carving and woodworking quite a bit. Um, and this was the event that just came up from everyone. So everyone I spoke to was kind of mentioning this event and how great it was and how it was vital to attend this event. So here I am, that's it. So we got here yesterday and it was a Thursday evening. Now we got it quite late, we had to set up. There was like an induction thing. So no time to film at all. So instead what I've done is just started today. This is a Friday morning. So this runs from Thursday evening up until Sunday afternoon. Um, I might have to leave Sunday a little bit early. And so what I'm gonna to aim to do with this particular video that you're watching is basically an overview. So this is kind of encapsulating as much as I can of the event itself. Now there's a lot of instructors here that are teaching courses and little workshops and taster sessions. And these are spoon carvers from all over the world, from the US, from Sweden, uh, from Holland, obviously from the UK. And they're extremely talented. As well as that, the people that are attending are extremely talented as well. So you've got this hub of really, really uh, talented uh, individual and craftspeople from all over the world and you've got all the ranges you've got complete beginners all the way to very very advanced now for those of you that are obviously to the bushcraft side of things the reason why I consider this important is because of the skills these people have with axe work with knife work with wood etc so regardless of what your kind of preference is bushcraft or woodworking or spoon carving there's going to be something here for everyone it really is you're outdoors and you're really working with basic tools to create beautiful inanimate objects so here I am. So like I said, this video is going to be a general overview. So the, the footage might be a little bit choppy because that's because I want to try and encapsulate as much as I can of the entire event. So I want to try and grab little things here and there. Now on the side, what I am planning to do, and hopefully this goes to plan, is to record smaller separate videos uh, with people that are here that are professionals in different topics. So I've already started to eyeball a few people up. So I'm like a hitman with my little target list. So what I'm gonna do is put those out as separate videos um, and then kind of you know, put it out on my channel down the line. So I kind of get the best of both worlds. But obviously I have to go with the flow with that, you know, based on weather and logistics and so forth. So this video, like I said, is just a general video diary. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video covering Spoonfest 2015. Up on the board over in the village hall about yeah. finishes and finishing Ooh. and a bit of basic chemistry and, and what happens with linseed oil so that you can learn fine to it. Why not? Why yeah, not add exactly. oil there? I, I use some grapeseed. It no, works. No, yeah. the thing is, it, the taste is okay. Yeah. Well, you know that there's... Um, Yeah, I'm good. 
So you might want to kind of wipe some of the sand. When you're holding that piece, up here. That's perfect. Right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do it. I need to Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me over this. Basically, this is a section where you're able to sell your spoons and stuff that you've made. Um, so this is a really cool feature. So obviously there's a lot of talented people that come here, extremely talented. And this is an opportunity to kind of sell their stuff, you can see what they've got going on. And obviously it's an opportunity to buy a piece of work from a very talented woodworker. So this section is going to be very full up over the next hour or so. But let's get some footage of uh, a close up of the stuff over here. So Robin was one of the co-organisers, makes his own brand of tools. So this is the opening kind of hooks, this is the carving axes that he does. Compound curve hooks. So you get a standard mora. This stuff here is from the talented Martin Hazel. 
to see most of the time. But just, just to give you an analogy on the size, that's my finger there. It's sort of really, really tiny, and they actually get smaller. This is actually car from Burr. These bows here. Check out the size of these. I love, 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 love these. Check out how tiny they are. It's like little tiny old cookie type designs. <laughs> so that is from Martin Hazen. So these are from Adam Hawker, an extremely talented individual. The detail on these. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. So there you go, that is Adam Walker at gmail.com. A very, very talented individual. And next we have Owen Thomas, another very talented individual. Some very interesting designs on his dog. So in this one we have Simon Hill. You know it's I've got that much ring. Yes. I suppose you've got a bin back there. And here we've got Chris Allen, who's appeared in the previous video. Some beautiful work, some carving bibs, beautiful little cookies. And here we have Jane Micklebrook. Yeah, they'll get right messed up. So this is from Magnus, who worked from Sweden, who's come over to teach. Experience with worker. Got some incredible detail work on these. Absolutely incredible detail. Does anybody need any help? Yeah, we had. Would you like to pay for anything? Okay, for that? No, no. Sorry? You don't want to pay it, but you want to? So here we've got another than. Isn't that your own? Our own loose stuffer. It's similar to the one I made. So you can use it if you've watched my channel for any period of time. Yeah. Can you put them back in these alone? Great display. Yeah. This is from Adrian Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you just saw there were all the workshops that were going on and the spoons for sale. That was in this huge marquee over here, so there's some fantastic stuff. Now I couldn't show loads of stuff because obviously they're paid workshops and you know, I just had to respect the fact I could only record like short little segments. Um, but there were some absolutely amazing skills that were being shared there. I just want to show you the scenery around. We're in Edel and it, we are surrounded 360 degrees by beautiful, beautiful scenery. So hopefully the camera will give it justice. But then you look around here. You've got obviously all the camper vans here, but you've got all the mountains behind there as well. That tree line. And then you've got it over here. Look at that. Absolutely spectacular scenery. Incredible. So there you go. It's a beautiful, beautiful location. Clear. So... These whole thing of actually getting it in direct sunlight, when you do that oiling, can actually make a noticeable difference in how much it yellows or not. So, um, does that really, if you put it behind glass, that will affect it? Um, it depends. So, if you've put it in your car, like say on the dashboard, um, it's going to have less impact than if it's in standard light, because most car windows have UV 
coatings to reduce the amount of UV that comes in. So there's definitely an impact. I have just some plate glass that I've built a little thing. Um, interesting thing, squirrels really love the smell of um, linseed oil. <laughs> Okay, so here we have the village hall, which is just across from the field where the event is, and this is the Spoonfest Gallery, so let's take a walk in. So here this is Robin Wood, one of the co-organisers, this is Worldwide Collection. So this is obviously stuff that's been collected from all over the world. And there you go. And here we've got spoons from Skedfest 2014, which I believe is a event in Scandinavia. Do you like this? Just in all of these incredible pieces of work. Just to give you an idea, look at that. That's a nice idea, but they're only falling off. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a miniature cook, something like that. Once again, collection. So we've got here Robin Wood's uh, library. Okay, that's what he's got there. Okay, so Robin was personal library. An absolutely incredible selection. Well, books here. Collected over the years. And here we've got a gentleman, Lewis Goldwater. He's carved one a day for 309 days. They're actually numbered as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> And here we got the gallery submitted by various uh, attendees and, and esteemed guests. So I'm just showing this to give you inspiration for those of you not attended, the kind of work that goes on. Hopefully, don't leave anyone out. Excuse me. Got one other least offer. I spin on your receiver. Got spin cops from all over the world here. We got the dong. So many different styles here. Beth Moon, Alex Cook, Cornwall, got Jane Mickleborough. Well, I met her at the event, like I did a lot of people. And Barker, Amy Lee, Sussex. And there you go. And if we move to the table here, what have got here? Spoons with between us. So these are the ones that have actually been used. Oh, my cinema bar phone's not being carved. Cinema bar. Oh, Smaller than that one. Yeah, I think that's probably the smallest, lightest one they do. It must be, it must be, isn't it? There? But it really is nice either to mm. use it from the end or mm. you know, for, for fine stuff. Mm. Have you seen this, Joe? So, here what you're seeing is not a logging factory based in Canada. This is actually the wood pile. So, this was collected by John Mullaney. Yeah. Who helped the co-organisers here of the event? He's done an incredible job here of sourcing all this wood for carving. And this is behind a marquee, and this is where everyone's carving away. People of all skill sets here. 
uh, the spoon against you, and then all of a sudden you put pressure on it and you slip. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I, I, I should be tapping my toes. Yeah. 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 And is that on YouTube or something? No, she's in there. No, she's in there with her shopping bag. All right. <laughs> is that on YouTube? Yes, I'll send you a link. Oh, cheers. Yes, yes. What, you mean there's real people here? Like, you know? But it's actually not her video, she said. Um, someone else made that video of her. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's pretty good for her. Well, I imagine so. Yeah. I drew Anna earlier on. Did you? So you just created the two sides of the sheet, right? Yeah, I'm just going to check the right this, size a little bit. These two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now you just weave it back and forth? You do, yeah. That's all you do. It's dead easy. So let's get this the right length. It's just a freaking genius. Just covering it, yeah. The first year I came here it was the very first Spoonfest. And Jared was making these and I was like, whoa, oh, yeah, no, what? Jared. Yeah. Jared's fabulous. Kind of famous fabulous, fabulous man. Let's trim this off a little bit. I think that bad bit will be okay. Right, so what you do is you put them together like this. Okay. It's not quite straight either. I'm going to have to tidy up a bit. Because what you want is the width now. So you go for the length and then you look for the width to get it just right. And does it have to be well, exactly the same uh, uh, width? Yeah, because tight, it goes tight around it. Oh, so it's like a tight, yes. But the friction yeah. fit, right? And yeah, it is. And when it's dried, it's so hard that it doesn't cut, that it doesn't cut through. That's so right. you don't need a weld. That's right. So you want it the oh, right, gotcha. right width. Okay. I'm just using my knife for this. I'm All right, so I want it. I think we okay. sometimes have to get to the fire because it's so extreme. I know, I'm coming as well. Oh, there's a bad bit. We can take that side off. Right, okay. Well, they're not bothering it. you, Seth. They're not coming to you, right? They're bothering I'm, me. I'm aware at the moment. They're coming to that me. That there is skin so soft. It's a it's an um, a skin softener from really? Avon. The the SAS use it and they call it SSS, but it's skin so soft. Are you serious? It keeps the midges away. Yeah, yeah. It's, no two, it's four quid a bottle. It's brilliant. Nothing bad in it. All good. And, and it's just against the fly, so what? Yeah, you put it on your skin though. It, what it does is they land on it, they don't like the oil and they go away. So you have to put it on your skin, you can't oh like... Oh my god, it smells yeah, good now. The worst is... And your skin's will be moist afterwards. The worst is DEET. I cannot stand Deet, that no, stuff. No, 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 it's just no, no, no. lethal. Well, I work with kids all the time, that's The funny thing marvelous. is, like, I bought me the super expensive bis Bisbuin, or whatever it's called, um, sun sunscreen. Right. And that seems to attract everything Brilliant. that wants to bite or sting me. Right. Right, okay. I'm gonna make it that way, I think. Just what I needed after my bath in the creek. Yeah. Skin soft. Yeah, and it'll be lovely and lovely and fluffy. There we go. I think that's gonna be it's okay. Really awesome. So yeah, so you make it like that. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tidy it because it obviously wasn't. You didn't do anything else than just um, trimming it on the sides, right? Just trim the sides, Sorry. sort of roughly, really. I'm just gonna tidy it up a little bit now. Light's not very good, is it? So then we measure it. measure again, make sure, make sure it's fine. That's okay. That's good. I think it's enough there. Perfect. Not bad. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's okay. Just on the edge of being right. So then what you do is you make um, some lengths um, as neatly as you can. Put a bit there, so we take that off. I mean, you can spend a bit of time fiddling and getting little fluffy bits off if you're OCD that way, you know what I mean? Some people are, they need to do that. But not me. I like rustic. Wow. So that's fine. That was a straight cut. Ah, uh, he used to be a dressmaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's handy when it comes to these things. Right, okay, so what you do is you put it in the side like that. Yeah. And then you start threading. So the first one goes through there. Is that right? Mm, okay, that you right? start inside, you go inside. Yeah, you go inside the first one. 
I think that's right, let's have a look. Yeah. And then you come round the outside. And then this side you go in the inside. Yeah. When you say inside, it means on one side of it, yeah? yeah? In there's two loops there. So okay. you go inside the other loop. Yeah? And then you come round and you go inside this one. I think that's right. Yeah, that's it. So pull it nice and tight, make sure these ends are all in properly. And then you go on the outside of that one. So, I've just spent about half an hour with a delightful lady called Denny who was just a few yards from where we were camped. So this is the Moro 106 as a carving knife. So this is the plastic sheath that it comes with. It's a decent knife uh, 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 sheath, but she then taught me, and she made this herself, but she walked through the process of making this. This is actually from elm bark. Um, and so usually they make it from birch bark. So this is quite tight fitting. Now she's actually coated this with chameleon oil so it doesn't rust. But this is freshly formed, made from elm bark. It's actually called elm bast, which is a layer between the bark and the actual tree itself. And this is incredible. So she taught me how to make this. And the idea here is that you're making a very cheap, but very effective sheath for your knives. And obviously for your tools and whatever it is you want to make it for. And what this does, obviously this is wet, so you have to work with it while it's wet. And the idea is, is that you just let this dry now. So once it dries, all of these kind of weaves will lock into place. And that's it, you're done. And I'm going to quickly show her details, but she, you know, she was very, very kind to take her some time out. So there you go. There you go, those are details there. So like I said, she's done an incredible job. And Denny, if you're watching this video, seriously, thank you so much. It was very kind of you. I always wanted to know how to make these. them regularly? Yeah. Oh, you'll get
What I really want to get down to is all of this. I want to see that on the inside. Very clever woman. Something in pastels, and she'd made. She got something like. Plate, or you can just just carve. Sometimes a saw comes in handy to put in some release cuts. You can do it from the top if you want to put that crank in with the axe. So using a saw, I'm going to cut, cut in here. So there's probably about 10 millimeters of wood left in the middle, hopefully, and that will be the shoulder, where the shoulders of the bowl get cut in. And what it does do, when I want to split away some of this timber from the handle, it means that that saw cut enables this wood to come off without obviously So I bumped into a friend of mine, John Mullaney, who works with the organisers of the event and he very kindly gifted me this, which is spalted white bean and it's a cookser, absolutely fantastic. Now the condition he's given it to me on is the fact I've got to finish it off. So he's done an incredible job already, he's actually done most of it, but I've got to work on the outside. I think I've got to thin this out, kind of shape this a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to hopefully do today, work on this and get this finished off. So a huge thanks to John Millennium, absolute superstar. Thank you. And furthermore, 
This is the one thing that I bought in terms of work. Once again, this is from John Mulaney. This is a shrink pot. So this is made from alder. And um, I've only come to recently find out what these actually are, what shrink pots are. So what they are is intrinsically, it's made from one, one log or one big branch and it's hollowed out, it's all carved out. Well, they drill out first and then they carve it all out by hand. Then what they do, they actually make the lid. It's based from a hardwood. And the idea is, is that you shape the hardwood and you let it shrink, so as it dries, this tightens up. So you can tighten it up and it won't even fall off. You can just loosen it and it comes off. Same with the base. They do a piece of hardwood that fits in there just perfect with a groove. So as it shrinks, it's actually shrinks around the hardwood and it holds it in place naturally. So these are called shrink pots. I've only recently come to find out what these are. Uh, and these are fantastic. So this I bought from John Mulaney, once again, an incredibly talented individual, very, very humble. And when I saw this, I couldn't resist it. So like I said, a beautiful piece of work. I'm gonna, it's my first ever shrink pot. So I'm very proud to own a piece of work by John Mulaney. And once again, John, thank you. So here we are with none other than Lee Stoffer. Lee, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Zed. Excellent stuff. Well, I'm doing awesome, right. So we are playing doctor today, aren't we? Yeah, I've got a tool that needs a little bit of attention. It's got a tiny nick in the edge around here somewhere. Um, the camera's not going to pick it up because I can only see it with this 10 times magnifying glass, but it's around there somewhere. So I'm going to start with some fairly fine abrasives and see if I can tickle it out. So I'm going to start with a 2000 grit wet and dry, which is wrapped around a piece of uh, six mil silver steel. So it's nice and, nice and small, it can get in here, and I'm just going to work this around the inside edge just to try and polish this problem away. So I'm not, relo not removing a lot of material because I don't want to take away any more than I really have to. But hopefully a good few passes with this. So you're turning the paper around as well? Just I'm just it. slightly rotating it. Each time I take a pass it means that I'm going to be using a slightly different bit of abrasive with each pass. And then what I'll often do is come and turn the whole rod over so I'm then spinning it in the opposite direction because I'm going to create a bit of a spiral. Right. And that way you just, you just make sure you're working on a nice fresh bit of abrasive all the time. And I'm looking to hold, the, hold this bar so it's in contact with the spine and the edge at the same time to make sure I'm keeping the angle nice and flat. And I'm going to do most of the work here on the inside of the blade. And then I'm just going to, just going to basically take any burr that we've formed off on the outside. So I've had a good few passes with this now. Hopefully, that should have got rid of it. Now I'm going to move up to a 3000 grit, so in exactly the same setup. And do exactly the same thing. So, all I'm really looking to do now is polish out the the 2000 grit scratches with the 3000 grit and then I'm going to move up to a it's, it's a solid wood dowel it's loaded preloaded with polishing compound right and again that's going to do the same thing just just polish out those 3000 grit scratches with a bit of luck so you're not taking it back you're just passing it one direction no, in, I found with this it's easy just to pass it through because otherwise what you're doing drawing it back you're, you're quite likely to catch it on the edge right. and take lumps out of the wood so then it's not a nice smooth surface so if I only travel in one direction with it it's easy enough to pass it from hand to hand again I'm just slightly rotating this as I go making sure this is why I put it in a vice so I can get right under it and use both hands to control the angle and I've got a nice length to work with then so I've got plenty of compound coming in contact and then with that done, what you'll notice is there's a little bit, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, there's a little bit of a build up of the compound on the inside where it's just rubbed off of here. So this is a, a same thing, it's still loaded with compound but it's leather wrapped around the same dowel and it's quite, quite fluffy leather. So what I'm going to do with this is this, just a couple of passes of this, just to clean off that polishing compound basically. It's not really doing much of a sharpening job, it's just taking away any of that excess compound that might start leaving marks on the wood and stuff. Gotcha. Um, and then on the outside, so that's the sharpening all done for now on the inside. I've got a bit of 5000 grit wet and dry on this side of the strop and then the compound again on the leather side. So I'm just going to take a couple of passes with the 5000 and you can see it's not oh, removing it's a lot of material but there's the, the evidence that it's taken some. 
And I'm just looking for a couple of passes, maintaining this angle. Just try and control, I'm just controlling the angle of these fingers, so I'm leaning back. Just a few passes just to clean that up, and then I'm going to turn that over and just polish it out with the strop side. And because this is the only side of the blade that's a problem, this is the side of blade that I've been concentrating on. There's not going to be any harm in just coming around and giving this side a little go. But again, I need to really control that angle. And then I quite often do the sides like that, and then I get down a little bit so I can work on the top of the blade and again make sure I can see that I'm contacting at the right angle and just rolling that through. And that, hopefully, should have given us a nice sharp edge that I'm going to be able to clean. See all the dirty marks I've touched this with. And one little caveat, things. it's important to check it with dry wood, isn't it? Ideally, this is quite wet and it's cutting nicely now. I can't see any evidence of a track mark, but like you say, if I had a nice dry piece, that would, that would show the evidence a lot easier than the wet wood. But now that's, that's cutting really nicely now. You can see I'm getting virtually transparent shavings with it. You can kind of see the, you know, see through these. So when it's nice and sharp, you know, you should be able to get this nice thin shaving. And you can see it's obviously, I can't see any evidence of a track mark there now. I'm just gonna have a quick look here. And actually I can still see there's still a tiny, tiny little chip. But I'm not gonna actually, look, so I won't probably get rid of that with these fine abrasives. So I'll wait till I get home. It's still carving fine. Yeah. Um, so I'll wait till I get home and I'll go over this. I'll probably get back to a thousand grit to get rid of that. Maybe even a bit coarser if necessary. But what I do need to do is make sure I obviously get rid of that entirely. To, to make sure that the tool is going to not leave any marks in the in the bowl of the spoon. But for what I've got here for now, it's, I've sort of done what I can. So fantastic. And there you are, staff. Thank you for demonstrating that. No problem at all. So we got Don serving. That's what we got. <laughs> With water dripping off my beard, I'm sure, because I just downed a pint all at once. Look at that American service, man. Right, I would like a veggie option, please, Don. Yeah, all right. So that's a really strong wrist. Yeah? We serve in style here. It's all about presentation. I don't know which one. Who's this one? Let's do a Oh yeah. Actually, I need. Actually, no. You know what you could do? Um, we used to make these little bread shots. Where you kind of have something like that, but then you'd put like a big thumb and move it around. And you'd put, like, stuff moving. Oh, it goes. 
garlic. Yes, please. What sort of cheese you want? Uh, what have you got? What have you got? Mozzarella cheddar. Well, Good mozzarella, please. Thirty minutes yeah. Italy, you kind of Spoiled. Oh, yeah. 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 So here they're processing the birch yes. tar. I've got a lot more. So let's see how this came out. How's it looking, John? Oh, looking yeah. good. Looking good. darker, isn't it? Mm. Got a lot more this time. Has it been in for longer? Yeah, it's been in for longer this cool. time, but there's a lot more there. Look at our result. So guys, that is a wrap for Spoonfest 2015. It's Sunday, I think it's approaching midday. I've actually got to leave. This runs till about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Uh, got some other commitments back in London. Overall, this has been an incredible event and I really do mean that. It's the first time attending for me. So obviously, it's primarily centered around spoon carving, but there's a lot of leather work and a whole bunch of stuff going on. And really, just a sharing of skills. There are some incredibly, incredibly talented people here both as the teachers and also the visitors combined. 
um, and I've learned tons, I've got a lot of inspiration. So obviously this is primarily centered around spoon carving and green woodworking, but really the skills are kind of universal, be it bushcraft, outdoors, whatever it is that you're doing. The skills are just transferable um, and there's a lot to be learned here. Overall, I've genuinely had an amazing time. I think without doubt, all being well, I will be back here next year. They run a pre-fest, so what they do, some of the, uh, the guests that have come over, the experts, mainly from Sweden, the USA, and obviously here in the UK, they run a course for two or three days beforehand, which is separate from the Spoon Fest. Uh, and it's called a pre-fest and then there's a Spoon Fest after that. So if you wanted, you could have like five, six days straight, you know, of just pure carving, woodworking and a whole bunch of skills. What I'm gonna do is needless to say, I will put a link to Spoon Fest below this video. Uh, please do go check it out. If you're able to come whenever you're watching the next one uh, that is coming up here next year or thereafter, uh, please do come down. Honestly, it's an incredible event. Wherever you are, it really is worth it. You're gonna meet some amazing people. Like I said, all being well in 2016, and will be attending myself. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So also, aside from that, I've posted a lot of photos. I've taken a lot of photos. So videos, I apologize in advance if it's a little bit choppy. There's so much going on here. And I mean, there's so much going on here. It's impossible to record everything. So uh, what I've done is just try to take little bits of everything that's going on just to give you an overall feel. And the one thing I have done is taken a hell of a lot of photos. So what I've done is I posted them to my uh, Facebook. The link for that is below this video. Please do go check them out. You can see stuff in a lot more detail and also a lot of stuff I've not been able to cover in this video. And without further ado, I think there you go. That is a wrap for Spoon Fest 2015. Like I said, an amazing event. Share images below, link to Facebook, the link to Spoonfest website itself. Please do check that out below. I need to add something, this is not a scarcity thing, but when the Spoonfest tickets go on sale, I kid you not, the tickets are gone within a week, a week and a half, bam, and you have a massive waiting list. And that's not a scarcity thing, it really is the case. Um, it was sold out within about a week and a half, I think it was within about 10 days of the tickets opening up. So always keep checking back for the tickets, don't leave it until last minute, you're just not gonna get a ticket, literally. Um, so many people were trying to clamber over themselves to get tickets and it was sold out within a short period of time. So, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching until the end. Please let me know your thoughts and suggestions below. If you have any comments or feedback, I'm always welcome. I promise I'm not going to cry. If you've got anything critical to say, I'm kind of open to all the suggestions and ideas. So, thank you once again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you check out the links below. And as always, until the next time, wishing you a blessed day. See, I'm losing my thought, train of thought here, but I'm going to carry on going like a true professional. I wish you a blessed day, a blessed week ahead, and as always, this is Ed from Z Outdoors. Peace out.